Coming up on show 398, electric motorcycles from Zero are making a big splash today. I'll tell you why. Also, the Peugeot E208 gets revealed in more detail following the rumours last week. And Audi launches plug-in versions of not one, not two, not three, but four of their most popular cars. Those stories and many more. We've got seven big EV stories to talk about today on the podcast coming up Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for Monday, 25th of February. My name is Martin Lee. I've been through every EV story that I can find today and picked out the ones that I think you need to know about. On location today as well, if it sounds echoey, I don't know how much of the echo you can hear. I'm basically in one big bathroom, except this is the lounge. Let me explain. I'm in Malta the island of Malta, and everything here is designed to keep places cool because this place is hot, right? So all the buildings have kind of balconies with covers and hard floor. So marble floor, hard, uh, uh, everything is stone and everything's designed to keep the place cool. Uh, But we've come in February when it's already cold, uh, the cold month. And so... Uh, we've got the heating whacked on full. And, and I'm inside anyway because the weather is its the worst storm in 25 years they've ha- they're having. In fact, they're fishing at the moment by standing down by the seawall. And as the storm is throwing fish and the waves over, they're putting them in buckets. So I'm tucked away indoors uh, so, uh, looking at EV stories for you. So that's what is going on for the next four days. We have uh, flown over to see some friends who live here, which I can do because I'm uh, technically unemployed at the moment. I quit my career last Friday to concentrate on making podcasts. And thank you for your support on Patreon. New producers, Pierre Morasti. Pierre, thank you so much for being a new producer of the podcast on Patreon. Paul Cosman as well, and a new executive producer, James Storr, all signing up uh, to support this show and spread the word about clean, green, fun travel in EVs. And as always, thank you to our longtime supporters, myev.com. Let's start with a car that was rumoured last week and now confirmed. I wonder how much the schedule was brought forward because these were supposedly leaked pictures to French media. And you never know. Sometimes they're placed and all those kind of things. And and other times they are genuine leaks. But that was last week. And now we have more details of the Peugeot or Peugeot E208. The 208, a very famous number in Peugeot's history. And now we have more details, more specs for the E208. And they've had a, a really nice uh, YouTube video all ready to go. So, I mean, they weren't as if, as if they're caught on the hop anyway. It's going to be built on the new platform, the ECMP, which plenty of other cars in the company are going to be built on. Public unveiling will be Geneva Motor Show. There's new images been released by Peugeot today, says Mark Kane for InsideEVs.com. The battery's 50 kilowatt hours. That's good for 211 miles, which for a small, cheap city car, okay, cheap by EV standards, then that is loads, right? The WLTP range is 211, so maybe EPA range will be about 200 if this car were ever to be sold in the US, which is enormously doubtful. Uh, But please prove me wrong, Peugeot. Uh, Covered by an eight-year warranty, which takes you down to 70% capacity. The power is 100 kilowatts on the motor. That's 0 to 62 in eight seconds, which is quick. The brisk acceleration is actually, if you're doing city driving and doing 0 to 50 Ks, which is like away from the lights, get to 30 miles an hour, 2.8 2.8 seconds. That's going to give you a little pushback, right? A little punch in the gut. Uh, there's also going to be three phase onboard charging at 11 kilowatts. If you don't have three phase charging, then in your, your home single phase charging, that's going to be what, seven point something if, if you work out on the single phase. Peugeot have added a heat pump on this to save range. They've specced it really well. I don't know about who's supplying the cells for the battery or whether there's going to be that liquid thermal management to keep it warm when it needs to be and cool when it needs to be to make the batteries last longer. Uh, We're looking for those technical details as I speak. Uh, Orders will be accepted from summer this year. The launch will be in the fall of 2019, says Inside EVs, or what we would call the autumn. The tagline, by the way, that Peugeot are using is this, unboring the future. And I like that. I think my favorite at the mo- I think my favorite is still electric has gone Audi rather than Audi has gone electric. I think that's a really nice wordplay, but this is a cool, a cool tagline, unboring the future. I'll put a YouTube link, by the way, to one of the videos that Peugeot have released and also to Inside EVs in the show notes. Click on those and find out more. Let's talk about 
something on two wheels for a change. We'll go to our favourite bike website, rideapart.com. For the past month or so, Zero have been teasing a new addition to the lineup with only a few peaks at the silhouette and limited performance information to work with. Teasing has been done. The company now has finally unveiled the new Zero SRF, and we know that Zero has been working on this for a while, and the view's nice, says Sabrina at rideapart.com. The new SRF has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery. I mean, that's bigger than some early EVs, if you go back 10 years. Uh, and, the, uh, and that's in the high end, the S and the SR. What's changed is the electric motor. The 7 centimeter rotor, which is found in current Zero bikes, is now a 10 centimeter unit. Uh, it's got a performance boost. Both versions of the SRF, both in standard and premium trim, have 110 horsepower. Top speed is 124. You're brave if you're doing that with your lid on, on a bike. And the standard SRF will offer a combined range of between 102 and 123 miles, depending on your speed. Charging time will be around four and a half hours for the entry level model on a three kilowatt charger. One and a half hours if you pay extra for the six kilowatt fast charger. Pricing is $19,000 for the standard version. If you go for the premium, you get a screen, the fast charger, heated grips, aluminium bar ends for $2,000 extra. It positions the SRF at the top of the line over $2,000 above the SR. I'll put a link to uh, the Ride Apart article in the show notes. And actually, I've got a little YouTube video that I found today from Zero Motorcycles uh, with some more details on what is... If I was... If I was going to ride a bike, by the way, it's an expensive electric bike to ride. And I haven't ridden a bike in years, by the way. I know my wife is very happy that I don't ride a bike anymore um, because of uh, uh, she can sleep well at night when I'm not. However, it's been a while since I was, uh, was on a bike. This would be very tempting uh, to get me back on one. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with the video. The Zero SRF is the first naked sport bike of its kind delivering the most transformational motorcycling experience. Effortless power, torque and horsepower that redefine the riding experience and leave competitors in the dust. Innovative design and Zero's new ZF7510 motor delivers 140 foot-pounds of torque and 110 horsepower. The new rapid charge system paired with our ZF14.4 lithium ion battery results in up to 200 miles on a single charge and can be configured to charge to 95% in as little as an hour. Effortless control. The SRF is both brawn and brain, unprecedented in performance and adaptability. Equipped with Zero's Cypher 3 operating system and Bosch motorcycle stability control, the SRF boasts best-in-class straight line and cornering brake control across all 14 ride modes. Effortless connection. The first smart bike capable of real-time cellular connection thanks to the combination of Cypher 3 and Zero's next generation app and dash. Access ride data, bike location, and remotely set charging parameters anytime, anywhere. The SRF also communicates status updates, including interruptions in charging and tip-over. Okay, let's go on to the subject of batteries. Inside EVs reports that BYD has broken ground on its new lithium-ion battery factory in Chongqing, or Chongqing, uh, one of China's traditional auto manufacturing hubs. If you're listening in China, correct me on my pronunciation, please. The planned output is to be 20 gigawatt hours. That's an annual planned output, by the way, from eight fully automated cell production lines. The first stage of the plant is going to be completed a year from now. Now, if you look at last year, BYD's sales, so build, BYD, build your dreams, if you didn't know, in China, BYD sold about 230,000 plug-in cars and about 250,000 if you include the buses and the trucks. It means that the company is going to gain the potential to really increase production. And if you consider that in China, sales of plug-in cars are booming, it seems certain that BYD will need the extra capacity. Mark Kane at Inside EVs has done some very helpful maths for us. 20 gigawatt hours of annual production battery is equivalent to 200,000 pure EVs with a 100 kilowatt hour pack. Not many have that, by the way. So if you have a more sensible pack size of 50 kilowatt hours, so that's 400,000 cars. And if you think about it in terms of plug-ins, many plug-in hybrids have 25 kilowatt, either small city cars or 
luxurious plug-in hybrids with a 25 kilowatt hour pack that's 800,000 cars this is production for a lot of cars and uh, buses and trucks and everything that BYD make everything from dumpsters as well to pick up your rubbish from outside your house okay let's go to the top of the performance scale the Porsche Macan is going electric their best-selling vehicle powered by an internal combustion engine at the moment a crossover that handles way better than it really has any right to is now going electric uh, the new Financial Times report has been picked up by Eric at Jalopnik the decision by Porsche is going to be revealed tomorrow on Tuesday and it shows the car maker is serious about EVs the all electric Macan is going to have that sport utility vehicle shape all of that practicality produced in Leipzig by the way very soon early next decade the chief exec Oliver Bloom said Porsche was aiming for every second car it sold to be electrified not pure electric but electrified so include the hybrids in there by 2025 Porsche's electric ramp is more ambitious than the parent company VW. But talking about them and one of their brands, Audi, having revealed uh, some recent new details about the e-tron, great fully charged video with Johnny Smith, worth a watch. They've now revealed details of new plug-in versions of the very, very popular Q5, A6, A7, and A8, with a turbocharged petrol engine and an electric motor and lithium-ion battery pack. At the same time, the uh, Mark has also chosen to drop e-tron from any branding when you talk about plug-in hybrids. e-tron is for their pure electrics. e-tron branding is gone from the hybrids, which is a change from the past. Reports Evo, the variants of these cars all share the same battery pack. It's a 14.1 kilowatt-hour battery pack. You get about 25 miles of all-electric range. Some people will even do their commute if they've got a charger at work. 25 miles to work, charge up during the day, slow charger, drive home. They'll never turn the engine on. And I think these cars are really, really important over the next... I know cars have a longer life cycle than mobile phones, but if you do change your car every two, three years, the next car some people get will be a plug-in with a 25-mile range. Then the next one they buy... Well, they'll just go, well, let's just get an electric one because this just makes so much sense. So I'm not on a downer on plug-in hybrids. Uh, the final UK specs, pricing and availability not available yet, but they will fall in line with Audi's other similar models. Staying with Audi, is there an all-road version, an all-road version of the e-tron electric car being tested? New spy photos supplied to insideevs.com suggest so. The rumours suggest that the sportier version is going to get a three motor setup now you only really need one electric motor to have a great ev put one on each axle go two motors and you've got some serious performance and handling go three motors with two motors on the rear one on the front and you're getting some serious off-road action and it's a very capable car the e-tron Currently develops 402 horsepower, front and rear motors combined. Double the rear motors and you'd get 640 in total. Okay, we're making up the numbers here. But if you're doubling the e-tron's rear motors, maybe Audi decides not to give the e-tron all that power. But a 550 brake horsepower car is very, very powerful. And with all that EV power instantly on tap, man, that would be a fun car. Final story, all about the Nissan Leaf today. Jamie Electric says uh, some details about his test drive recently. Last week, we were invited to San Diego to drive the new Nissan Leaf Plus, the updated version of the Leaf with a new battery pack. If you haven't heard, it's 62 kilowatt hours. Current one has 40. New one has 62. Sales start in March in the US. Uh, They spent the day driving all through the county on a variety of roads and came away very impressed not surprised because it's the Leaf and it's a solid package but with a bigger battery. The main practical upshot, by the way, is more power. So you get, a, is it a bigger motor? Because the, the, I think they've actually put a new motor in the E+. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the current Leaf, 40 kilowatt hour, was basically the same Leaf. But the, under, the underneath bits wasn't really changed. We don't talk about that too much. But... It wasn't a vastly different car to the old one, but it was the top. It was the styling. It was the 
things like e-pedal and all that, which really changed. Some of the gubbins underneath, apart from the battery, a lot of it was the same. This new E+, Plus, I think, is technically, technologically different. So new motor, more power, get more from the battery, because it's a bigger battery. It can handle a higher uh, power coming out of it. Obviously more range, and quick charging ability. 100 kilowatt, oh, well, up to 100 kilowatt charging on Chadamo, sustained about 70, I think Nissan are keen for me to say. So sustained charging around 70 kilowatts, if you can find a Chadamo charger that'll do that. Nearly every chat, no, not nearly every Chadamo char charger I've ever seen is 50. The new ones can be faster, of course, but I've just not seen any yet. What about the price, though? Well, Chevy has reached the 200 vehicle mark, 200,000 vehicle mark in the US effectively raising the price because the tax credit has been halved starting in April. That does give Nissan a little breathing room if you're putting the Leaf Plus in the same segment as the Bolts. And if they end up with a price even a little higher than the Bolt, effectively you take $7,500 off because of the tax credit. Nissan has sold around 130,000 EVs in the US. So they've got a bit of headroom there before the credit runs out. Let's move on to our question of the week this week. Thanks to myev.com for setting this. Keep your comments coming in on email and on the comments on YouTube and Facebook and myev.com. Where did you or where will you buy an EV from? I'd love to make a list of the best places, the best markets, the best dealers, the best companies who are making EV buying a pleasure. Where did you get your EV from? Who can you recommend? Who can source EVs? Are there any big companies that you bought yours from that we should know about that I can talk about on the podcast? Anywhere in the world, let me know. If you had a great experience, let's put a little list of heroes together and celebrate the best ones. Uh, thank you very much to Talking of Heroes, 196 patrons of the podcast. If you want to join in, all the details are online, by the way. Thanks, as always, to Phil Roberts from Electric Future, our premium partner. Electricmotoring.net for Tesla hire in the Chicago area. And also Brad Crosby, our other premium partner on the podcast. There are, there are 397 previous shows online for free. Uh, if you want to have a look at the archive, you're more than welcome to. If you're more interested in the new ones, hit that subscribe button. And we've got some more podcasts coming this week from Malta, where there is a car sharing company called GoTo, and I found them today. I found six Renault Zoes parked up random places on the streets. Malta's a small island, by the way. It's about half a million people live here, I think. And so it was a delight to see so many EVs. Not as many EV chargers. I saw two today, and they were just uh, very uh, slow charges on the street. No rapid charges seen yet. But but uh, I'm going to get onto this company. I'm only here till Thursday and I don't know what the process is. I'm not local, whether I'm able to go through the, the process. It's a, it's a ride sharing uh, or a, a car sharing a company, I think. So you register, and even without a FOB, without an RFID, I should, on just on my mobile phone, be able to unlock the car. They use the ZE40, so they use the 40 kilowatt hour, 41 kilowatt hour Renault Zoe's over here. And I'd love to try it out, but I don't, I mean, I'm not local, I'm a tourist, uh, but we're inside the EU, so maybe, you know, my European passport, um, driving license should still work. Look, leave it with me. Uh, I'll let you know on the next podcast how I get on with that. If you want to say hi on the socials, please do. Check out Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow on location. And remember, even in Malta, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>